Okay, when we talk about compound events, we're talking about things that happened together. Like a compound sentence has two sentences together into one, right? So when we talk about compound events, we're going to talk about doing a couple of different things in the same uh, sequence or the same event. For example, okay, so a compound event combines two or more events using the word and or the word or. Okay, this is what's important with the word and. We're going to be multiplying and when events are the word or, we're going to add. So you got two different types of compound events that you're going to encounter. They're going to ask you for something, two events, and it's either going to be them to both happen and, so I'm going to roll a three and I'm going to roll on the next one something else. Or it's going to be the word or. So it's either going to have an and or an or. When it's an and, we multiply. When it's an or, we add. Okay. In addition to that, we have what's considered mutually exclusive events. If they're mutually exclusive, they have no common outcomes. For example, if I have two events, one is rolling a three and the other event is rolling an even number. They're not, they're mutually exclusive. You're either going to do one or the other. There's nothing in common for those two because the number three is not an even number. So those have no common outcomes. Question. Okay, so when we find the probability of mutually exclusive events, for example, this is what you're looking for on your paper, when it says the probability of A or B. So since that word is an or, and we said up above when it was or, what were we going to do? We were going to add. So we're just going to take the probability of the first event, and we're going to add it to the probability of the second event. And we're just adding the two probabilities together. So if I go up to this event up here, if I'm rolling a die, what's the probability that I'm going to roll a three? One out of six. One out of six. Plus, what's the probability that I'm going to roll an even number? One half. One half, right? On the die, there's two, four, and six. There's three different, or we could say three, six. There's three out of six on the die are even. And so I'm just going to add those together. I'll leave it as six so they have a common denominator. When we add fractions, we have to have a common denominator. So this would end up being four, six. And then I would re reduce that down to saying two-thirds. Two-thirds is the probability that I roll a three or I roll an even number. So we would be adding those two events together because it said or. Okay, when we have overlapping events, okay, to have, so they could be mutually exclusive events or they could be overlapping events when they have at least one common outcome. So here's an example of overlapping events. It says rolling an odd number or rolling a prime number. Well, there are odd numbers that are also prime numbers, so they overlap. They're, they fit into both of those categories. They have a common outcome. Okay, this is something that you need to write down. To find the probability of overlapping events, it's still an or statement, still A or B. So we're going to take the probability of the first event and add it to the probability of the second event. But when they overlap, we have to subtract the probability of what they have in common.
So if I were going to set this up, the probability of the first event rolling an odd number, how many odd numbers are there on a die? Three. There's three. There's one, there's three, and there's five. So that's three out of six. I'm not going to reduce it yet because I want to see what my denominators look like. Okay, rolling a prime number. Do you remember what a prime number is? A number that is not defined by anything but itself. Okay, so a number that has two factors, one and itself. Okay, so prime numbers would be? Two is a prime number. Three is a prime number. Five is a prime number. Uh, on a die. Is it one or two? Okay, rolling a prime number. Question is, is one a prime number? One. A prime number has two factors, one in itself. One is not a prime number because one and itself are the same one. It only has one factor. So we're going to say that there's three prime numbers. So that's three out of six also. Now we subtract what these two events have in common or what overlaps. So how many of those prime numbers were odd numbers? Two. two of them. So I have to subtract two of them. These were the two that they had in common. So it's a good idea not to reduce in the beginning because we want a common denominator when we add and subtract fractions. So 3 plus 3 is 6. 6 minus 2. That comes out to be 4 over 6 as well. Now we want to reduce. 2 over 3. 2 thirds. Okay, and they're not all going to be two-thirds. Those just happen to have the same probability. Okay, so you have to think about when it's an or statement, we are going to add, but when it we have overlapping events, we've got to subtract what they have in common. Okay, so here's an example. Here's example one. It says you roll a number cube or die, find the probability that you roll a two or an odd number. So in my sentence, I see the word or. What I have to decide is, are, this, are these two events mutually exclusive, or do they have something in common where they're going to overlap? So rolling a two, we'll call this rolling a two is event A, rolling an odd number is event B. So we're going to do the probability of A plus the probability of B. Do they have anything in common? Do they overlap at all? No. No, they don't. So there's nothing to subtract. So what is the probability that I roll a 2 on a die? 1 out of 6. 1 out of 6. And what's the probability that I roll an odd number? 3 out of 6. We do 1, 3, and 5 are odd numbers, so that would be 3 out of 6. We add them together. Four out of six, and now we reduce it down to two thirds again. Doing the same exact You're going to get a lot of those. Okay, next example it says you roll another cube, find the probability that you roll an even number or a prime number. So, again, it's an or statement, so we're going to be adding. We'll call this event A, rolling an even number is event A, rolling a prime number is event B. So we're going to say the probability of A plus the probability of B, and then we got to decide, is there anything that overlaps? We said the prime numbers were 2, 3, and 5. So is there anything on there that's even? Yes. Yeah, there's one that overlaps now, so we're going to subtract that. Okay, so we, we call that the probability of A and B. That's the overlapping part. So the probability of rolling the even number is 3 out of 6, plus the probability of rolling a prime number was also 3 out of 6, but now what overlaps is 1 out of 6. So 3 plus 3 is 6 minus 1. That has a probability of 5 sixths. Okay, now we're going to do some of the end. Okay, call these independent events. If 
occurrence of one event has no effect on the occurrence of another. That means they're independent of each other. So two things, they don't affect each other at all. So if I roll a die twice, I pick up the die and I roll it once, and then I pick it up and I roll it again, those two rolls don't affect each other in any way. Okay, they're independent of each other. It says to find the probability of independent events, this is an and. Okay, you see probability of A and B, we multiply the probability of the first event times the probability of the second event. So again, if it's going to be an and statement, we're going to multiply. Now to be honest with you, these two things, we don't really do anything different with it's independent or dependent. It says a dependent event if the occurrence of one event affects the occurrence of the other. We're still going to multiply. It's still an and, and we're still going to multiply. It's just the second probability we got to think about a little bit because it's altered by what happened in the first event. So what would be an example of this is if I'm drawing marbles out of a bag, and let's say there's three different colors of marble in the bag, and I want to know what's the probability that I uh, draw a red marble and... I draw a yellow marble. Well, it's going to be independent events if I draw the first marble, but then I put it back when I'm done, and then I draw the second marble. Those are going to be independent events. They don't affect each other. But when I draw the first marble, if I don't put it back, then that affects the probability of the second one because there's fewer marbles in the back. Okay, that would be a, an example of a dependent event. Or if I'm drawing cards out of a deck, if I draw a card and then I return it to the deck, that's going to be independent events because they're not going to affect each other on the draw. If I draw a card and I don't return it to the deck, then that's going to be dependent. That second probability is going to depend on the fact that I did not. I've already drawn once and I didn't return it. But we still multiply in both situations. Okay, so some examples of this. Okay, a bag contains four red, five green, two blue marbles. You randomly draw two marbles, one at a time. Find the probability that both are red. Okay, so in the first case, this is an independent situation because you replace the first marble. Okay, so I'm going to say the probability of A times the probability of B. Event 1 being you draw a red marble. Event A is that you draw a red marble on your first draw. And your second one is you draw a red marble on your second draw. How many marbles in the bag are red? How many? Four. How many total marbles are in the bag? Eleven. So four out of eleven is your probability of drawing a red marble. If you put it back in the bag, you replace it, what's the probability that you draw a red marble on your second draw? Still 4 out of 11. And you would multiply those together. So you're going to get 16 out of 121 is your probability. And you would reduce that if you can. Okay, on B, you don't replace the first marble. So again, when I start, all the marbles are in the bag. And I reach in, and if I draw a red marble, it's still going to be 4 out of 11 is my probability. There's 4 red marbles. There's 11 total marbles. But now, if I don't put that marble back, what's my probability of drawing a red marble now? 4 out of 10. 4 out of 10. The only thing that changes is how many total marbles are in the bag, because you didn't replace it. Results, it does affect the results. So 16 over 110, that's reducible. We would reduce that down. I can divide both of those by 2. So I would get 8 over 55 would be my probability when I didn't replace. Okay, that's, there's not a lot of difference in with the independent and the dependent. The only difference is, is that second probability is going to change. So it depends on the first.